So the story about high tines actually starts back in 2019. I got trail cam pictures of this buck and he really caught my attention for like his the length of his tines. He had really, really tall G2s and in his rack it was naturally kind of a higher rack buck anyways and I thought man he, he's got really good chance to have good potential and, and turn out to be something. So the end of the season rolls around and uh, he shows up on camera again and he broke off his one G2 on the one side but I was happy to see that he had he had made it through and because his tines were really tall beforehand and, and his rack was kind of higher that's kind of where he got the name of high times from. That's where I, that's where I came up with the name high times. So the summer of 2020 rolls around and I start getting trail cam pictures of him in the velvet and he's you know about the same frame as he was the year before really long tines tall rack deer just just a really nice solid eight pointer So now I'm sitting on pins and needles the rest of the season hoping he's going to make it. I mean, because it's, it's really tough on him around here to, to get through a gun season, especially a good mature buck. If they walk off the property line, I mean, the chances of them coming back are, are slim from, from the gun hunters and whatnot. But I just, you know, said a prayer, just was praying that he would make it and, uh, and get another chance to see what he was going to be next year. And so I'm getting pictures of him steadily through the gun season which was great and then he kind of disappeared for a little while and then a week before gun season closed I got a trail cam picture of him and he actually had shed one of his antlers he was just one horn now so I had pretty good hopes that even though he you know he was still around and that he shed that antler that he was definitely going to make it through the next to the next year So 2021 rolls around and I'm thinking to myself, if, if he shows up and he's got some extra points on him and, and whatnot and he's really, you know, growing up a lot more, I'll give maybe give him the green light and try to get him another year. But if he shows up and he's just a big solid eight point again, then I'm gonna I'm gonna put my full for focus into to hunting him. So the summer months are rolling through and I'm not seeing him, I'm not getting any trail camp pictures of him, and I started to get kind of nervous because the year before he had shed that antler so early and I thought well maybe he got maybe he was wounded maybe you know he died in the winter or something and so I just wasn't seeing him so you know all these thoughts were going through my head well finally one evening driving down the road I laid eyes on him out in the hay field So after he shed the velvet off, he finally showed up on one of my trail cameras in the, at the end of September um, in Hardhorn, and he was in the same area that he was spending most of his time in last year. So I figured for sure that the beginning of bow season, I knew right where I was going to sit. I was going to go to the same spot that I videoed him in, in the year before, and that was his main area. That's where I got most of his trail cam pictures and videos from, and seen him most of the time was in that one tick particular spot. And getting the the pictures of him and Hardhorn in that same area, I had a lot of confidence that it'd probably be opening day maybe even I'd get a shot at this buck. All right, here we go. It is officially opening day of bow season here in the, our state of New York. And uh, just getting ready to go out for the first sit of the year. We're going after a buck that I've had history with for three years now. We call him High Tines. He's a big mature eight-pointer we're going after. 
and the spot that we're going to is his kind of domain. Actually, I've sat in this spot last year. I sat in the stand, and um, he came out about 45, 50 yards, and he fed around in front of me for like 45 minutes to an hour, just right there within bow range. So, hoping tonight he'll do the same thing, and uh, we'll get a look at him. So, here we go. First afternoon, New York, 2021. We're off. I was starting to get a little bit nervous. I mean, the first week of the season, I wasn't seeing him at all. I wasn't getting any pictures of him. I didn't know where he went. But I finally started getting trail cam pictures of him again at around the 10th of October. I, I got a trail, I got a picture of him on my reveal camera, and he was working a scrape right by one of my stands. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna hunt this spot, and so I hunted that spot religiously throughout most of the season, and, and just was not seeing him. He wasn't showing up, and I got like one or two more trail cam pictures of him in daylight and it turns out it wasn't when i was there i was off doing something else a couple of evenings and i those were the times when he showed up and then he started coming in only after dark I finally got an encounter with him one morning, the end of October, and it was actually off camera. I was getting down out of my stand late morning, and after I lowered all my camera gear down to the ground and actually my bow hit the ground, then he came he came by and worked a scrape. And on the night of the 31st, I actually seen him from the, from the road, and he was with a hot doe, and he was way over in a different area than I had been hunting him. So I was like, okay, there's really no point in and going out the next morning. So I decided that I was gonna sleep in the next morning. Well, the next morning rolls around, it's about 8.30 in the morning, and I get a picture on my phone from my reveal trail camera, and it's him, and he's he's way over at the, the other end of the farm where I originally thought he was gonna be most of his time in his old stomping grounds, and I got a picture of him cruising through there about 8.30 in the morning on the reveal camera. So I was like, oh, well, he's back over in there. That's good, and I'll try to hunt him in the evening. Well, a few hours later roll by and then at 12.30 in the afternoon, I get another picture of him from the same camera of him cruising by there again. So I thought, okay, he's on his feet, he's really moving, so I need to get to the stand as quick as I can and sit the rest of the afternoon. This morning, come through here. I got a picture of my trail cam and my reveal cam. And then at 5 o'clock or at 12 30, come through here again. So we quick, quick ran over here, got up in the stand. Because he's cruising, he's in there. He's cruising through here pretty good. He's really quick. Also, the guy won't have to get to that. It's getting to be about 3.30 in the afternoon and, and I'm sitting in the stand and I look over to my left and, and I see a buck coming across the field and I'm like, oh, that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good buck. I mean, that's a nice deer. And I got my binoculars up and all of a sudden I realized it was him. He comes out of a thicket and he's, across, he's coming across the field and he's like 250, 270 yards away um, at the, out in this field. And so I'm like, with the wind being as strong as it is and as loud as it is, I'm like grunting at the at top of my lungs trying to get him to hear me. And he finally heard me a little bit, and I cracked the horns together, and it was trying to rattle, and, and was grunting at him, just hoping that he would hear me.
our encounter with high times. He mounted about 250 yards. I tried to bat him, tried to call him up in here. He heard me one time and he started to come and then he stopped and he turned and just kind of then he popped out again. And he started heading away from us. He's heading towards another the other stand that I've been hunting for most of the season. I tried rattling at him again. I don't know. He might he might come back over this way. I know he hurt me, but he might circle back up here. I hope. Dang, close, close. After he went back into the to the brush, another buck actually came out. A, a very nice two and a half year old eight point buck came out and, and he started working his way down the field coming right towards me. The two-year-old ended up showing up behind me in my in a food plot that was right behind me, probably about 100 yards. And I see him working a scrape and doing and making a rub, and then he started walking. He walked off into the thicket, coming around behind my stand. And I was like, "High time has got to be coming up behind him." So I just stayed watching that spot. And I didn't get him on film, but all of a sudden here he comes through the food plot, and he's working the same tracks as that two-year-old, and he followed him right into the brush. I'm like, "Okay." They're behind my stand now. They've got to either come around, they're either going to come around the west side of me and cross the field again to go into the big timber, or they're going to go to the cornfield that was over to the west. So I'm sitting, waiting, and all of a sudden the two year old pops out over by the cornfield and he walks across the field and goes on his way right off into the big woods. So I'm like, okay, high times is he's behind him, so he's, he's got to come out eventually. He's got to be right behind him. So I sit there and I'm looking, I'm, I'm frantically looking in the brush and I'm not seeing him anywhere, but I'm knowing he's, he's got to be right there. So I decide, you know, I'm just going to get my bow. So I turn around, grab my bow, get things, start to get things ready. And I look up and all of a sudden there he is 60 yards away. He pops out in the field 60 yards from me and starts cutting across the field. So he's walking across the field at 60 yards and, and I need to get him to come closer so I start grunting at him and he's not hearing it. I mean he's not looking at my, he's not looking my way, he's not hearing me so I'm grunting, grunting and he's getting across the field and he's starting to get to the edge of the woods and starting to go into the woods so as he starts to drop in the woods I just get as loud as I can once again just hoping that he'll hear me and finally just as he just before he got into the woods he i grunted really really loud and he snapped his head back and he looked right at me and then i i threw a snort wheeze at him and that was all it took as soon as he heard that snort wheeze he spun on a dime and came right to the tree Going down, baby. He's down, boys.
Yes, sir. High times is down. I am so sorry. I did not get the shot on video. I got it with my tactic cam though, but I did not get it with the good camera. He's 20 yards, he's coming right here at 20 yards, and, and I just, I was at full draw, and I'm trying to move the, I was trying to move the camera, but the, the, the handle was, the handle was just too, I couldn't, I couldn't get the handle in my hand, and I couldn't move it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've been hunting for 20 plus days to get that shot. I could, I had to hold the handle, and I was trying to like, hold the handle and move it, Ooh, the cameras as a full draw and as he's coming in and then he started to get really close and I just oh man I wish I had I, I'm sorry guys I couldn't get it in there but but it don't matter he's laying dead right there next to the field we pick him right up with the truck and it is 4.30 4.30 in the afternoon we've been seeing him since noon Pretty cool. Man, the rut's awesome. Hey, can you bring the truck so we can take him up? How many with it so far? Just the mule deer and him. I shot my mule deer with this arrow. 67 yards now. Got uh got he's laying right there. What a brute! The body on this deer is That is a stud of an eight pointer. Just an, uh, he, he's not a, a, a huge. He's not a huge rat deer. I mean, this deer's four and a half, five years old. I mean, he, he's. I'm not saying he's not big. I mean, he's. He is dang sure awesome. But this deer's body is just. In, insane. This, this is a huge oh. body deer. I watched him last year. Actually, last year, the first time I seen him in person. Or last year, I filmed him out of the same stand in the same spot. I got footage of him last year. I had him at 50 yards and I let him walk. And uh, it's kind of neat to shoot him, shoot him in the same spot this year. I would have to say this is probably the biggest deer I've ever shot body-wise. And definitely the biggest eight-pointer I've ever shot. The only thing that stinks, he broke both his brow tines off. But I do know what they look like before they broke off, and I got a taxidermy who probably can fix it, so we'll probably get that done. Unreal. God is good, folks. And that's my favorite part right there. What a stinking awesome deer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Sorry, folks, I didn't get him in the viewfinder when I shot him, but I just couldn't pull it. I was trying hard, I just couldn't get it, get it wrapped up. Man, what an awesome buck. All right, next day, we just got him caped out and uh, getting ready to take him over to my, my taxidermist and uh, get him taken care of. But before he went, I wanted to give him a quick uh, quick score, just for the heck of it. I like, you know, I like knowing what they're gonna score and stuff, but weighed him, last night we weighed him and uh, he weighed 300 pounds on the nose. So that one of my, well this is definitely my biggest buck that I've ever shot um, body wise and stuff. Not the biggest rack, but definitely body. Just a huge deer. I mean his head is just, look at his head, just a monster. So 
pretty awesome. So I'm gonna score him real quick and then take him over and we'll see what he uh, see what he turns out to be. And that would have made him, if he wouldn't have busted his brow tines off, and like I said, that's just a rough guess. That might even been longer than that. But that comes out to 138 and a half. So yeah, that's him, full high tines. This is the buck I've been after all year, watching for three. One thing's for certain, he's, he's no younger than four, and he's no older than five. So, it's an awesome hunt. Praise the Lord for a great time and a great deer. And, very excited to get him. Very excited. Thank y'all for watching this episode of Bucks and Bows. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to go to our YouTube channel, check out the different episodes that we have available for you to watch. Also be sure to click on that subscribe button and also click on the bell notification icon so you get notified each and every time we upload new videos. Thank y'all again for watching. God bless you and we'll see you next time right here on the Bucks and Bows YouTube channel.